listen, we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna take you through a little bit about why we did the project uh, and where we are with it, really. And, and really, the, the main thrust would be, what do we understand? What, what is the iCoach Kids pledge? Okay, but let me set the scene for you a little bit. Some of you may have seen this already because I, I present this in pretty much every every presentation because I think we need to go back to this. Why do you think you've got a picture of that on the screen? And if you've seen this before, okay, what's that? That's a hot card, okay? But you know where that that originated from? Who was the um, who made the 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 gold standard of horse carriages 500 years ago? The Hungarians. Okay, that's why I was talking before about the Hungarians. Every Hungarian, please put your hand up. Are you the only one today? Where's Laszlo? Okay, well, Laszlo is also Hungarian and a citizen of the world. Give Sultan a big round of applause, please. <laughs> because without Hungary, there's no coaches, and I'll explain that. There's a, yeah, there's a small town in, um, in Hungary called Kochi, right? And they were manufacturing this horse-drawn carriage in the 500 years ago. And they were doing such a good job that it became the gold standard. So everybody started referring to these things as coaches. Okay? And then the word in English evolved to coach. Okay? But in my country, for example, we still call cars today coaches. Okay? So it comes from that. Now, how did that then become... Uh, why, how did we go from the, the horse carriage to what we do, to coaching? Okay, and that was because in the, in, the, uh, in the 1800s, a bunch of uh, lecturers in Oxford University started to think about their job as they were taking the students on a journey from A to B, from where they were now to where they wanted to be in a few years from now. So they saw themselves as coaching these people on that journey. Okay? And I think that's really important that we realize that. Because if that's what we're doing, if we are coaching and we're taking people on a journey, the main thing we need to realize is that it is not our journey. It is their journey. And the destination is up to them. And all we can try to aspire to be is a really good horse that helps them along that destination. But it is their journey. It's not ours. Okay? Uh, someone pointed out to me, do you know what that is? <laughs> that actually is part of the analogy. Because as coaches we need to be really careful that we don't drop any poo along the way. Because we can do that sometimes as coaches. I do that all the time. Okay? And I need, we need to make sure that we keep realizing that it is our journey and there's no accidents along the journey. Okay? So that's where it comes from. Um, so please remember that every time you, um, you, you're coaching. I'm, I'm trying to do that and because I sometimes forget that it's not my journey, it's their journey. Uh, now, more, more scene setting. Uh, we've got a bit of an, uh, a paradox in, in Europe and I, I, I dare say the world where we are complaining all the time about children not being active enough because they're always like plugged to their playstations okay or to whatever or the TV or Netflix or Cartoon Network but at the same time we're also becoming overprotective of children and we don't let them play outside and we think it's dangerous and like Chris says all the time in Belgium every time someone sees a child climbing a tree they call the police because you know, children shouldn't be taking those risks, okay? Um, now, we've got the other extreme as well. We live in a society, in, in particularly in certain countries, where children are being overexposed to sport at an early age. And they're doing football on a Monday, swimming on a Tuesday, piano lessons then on a Tuesday night, and, uh, and they're also expected to be the next Michael Phelps, age five, okay? Um, so, we have a bit of a problem, right? Uh, and we need to recognize that, and that's why I Coach Kids was born, to try and address that problem. But let me show you, you know Chris and Jean-Louis did a session yesterday, so I took the video footage and I edited it overnight, okay, really quickly, and this is what they were doing yesterday. Yeah, we got a, a movie deal as well, out of it. life from sports, teamwork, discipline, and fair play. Values that can only be passed on by a kind, caring, mature head coach. You got to pull at all costs. I want you to play dirty if you have to, but don't get caught. Hit the field. Let's go. What was that? I, I thought I had the shot. You thought? You're 
thinking like a crazy person. Grab some bench. Hey, you just deserve the plan of humiliation. How's that feel? Pick up that piece of trash, Tom. Tuck in your shirt. What are you doing? Have a sense of pride. In fact, why don't you take a lap? Go! Faster! You call a group of ten-year-olds losers. You're a loser! You're a loser! Dad, you gotta lighten up. I'm doing this all for you. So we have fun, huh? Okay, so can you recognize any coaches uh, in this coach? Can you maybe recognize yourself every now and again? Because I definitely can. Okay, I've given an example. I'm coaching my own son this year. <laughs> okay, wish me good luck and wish him good luck as well. Okay, um, but and I'm you know, also just watching that now and, and having Chris, Chris Van der Hagen in mind. If there was ever a movie about Chris, Will Farrell would be an ideal, ideal actor for it, I think. Um, but anyway, we that's that's the kind of coach we're trying to target with the, with the whole iCoach kids. That that guy that because if you watch that movie, this guy couldn't run fast enough, and that's why he ended up being the coach. Everybody else disappeared, and he ended up being the coach, and that happens all the time. Okay, and coaches like that, they mean well, but a lot of the time they don't know how to because they've never been shown how to. Okay, or they, co they coach kids as if they were, as, as they were coached when they were younger or as they were coached when they were an adult. So we need to help those because we've got another problem as well. This idea of the talent pyramid that is so prevalent in so many countries and so, and so many sports still. In, in 2018, that some start playing the sport, some will progress and continue, and only a handful, after we really increase the demands and we really have them training for 30 hours a week, will make it. Okay? And we don't care about the rest. And they just drop out and we don't care. Okay? There is a problem there. Not only drop out, but all those negative consequences that Nicolette was outlining so well yesterday in, in, in her keynote, we need to look after that. That is a big problem. And we want to try and start looking at sport in a different way. Because Houston, we have a problem. So can we look at this in a different way? Going from that pyramid to something we call the participation cube. And let me explain what that means. That yes, yeah, some will start, some will continue, some, some will make it, but along that process, some will change sport, and we will help them do that. Some will um, keep playing forever, but they might actually change the format of the same sport. So in my case with basketball, some kids might not want to carry on playing 5-on-5 five five basketball, but they might go into 3-on-3, three three, which is really popular for teenagers, and it's a way to keep them in our sport. Later on, they might change again. Okay? But everybody keeps playing. One sport in different formats or different sports. That's what we're aiming for. And on top of that, we, try to, we have to try and be more um, respectful of individual trajectories when this is happening. And that's why it is a cube, because it's across time, across sports, and across motives. Because people's motives to do sport will change over time. When I was 15, I wanted to play in the NBA. Now, I just want to be healthy. So I was doing basketball then, now I'm running whenever I can. Okay? That will happen to all of us. And we need to be prepared for that as a sport. Okay. So where do we start? First thing is realizing that children are not mini adults. And that's been said a thousand times in the last in the last twenty four hours. But it's so important. Children are not mini adults. Second thing we need to realise is that you, us, the coaches, are the environmental architects. Like Nicolette said yesterday. We are responsible for creating an environment, a climate, where all of that can happen. People don't drop out, people enjoy themselves, people get better, people want to play sport uh, and be active for life. But to do that, to, to be the environmental architect, and there's no question about it, you are the environmental architect. Okay, you are the most important piece in, that, in creating that environment. We need a big toolbox. Okay? 
because lo you know, long gone are the days of thinking that coaching is about putting cones on the floor and running drills. That's just the tip of the iceberg in coaching. There's a lot of it's the, the relationship building, the climate building, the, uh, the influence in your own organization to make sure that the environment is right. There's a lot that goes on around coaching. There's the reflection piece that you were talking about before, Zoltan. Okay? And that all has to happen. All right? But we need to give to, uh, coaches that toolbox. Because at the moment, in coach education, in most countries and sports, we are not doing that. We are teaching coaches about their sport but we're not teaching them that much about all the other stuff. So we're teaching them about the X's and O's and the cones, but we're not really doing much around the whole host of other things they need to do to, to really do create that climate that Nicolette was saying yesterday. So is it mission impossible? <coughs> and as I was, uh, <laughs> I was uh, putting that, that slide up, I thought that that actually could have been any member of the ICOS Kids family over the last three weeks. That's what we were doing for the last three weeks. You looked like a Mission Impossible, but here we are. Um, but I don't think it's a Mission Impossible. And that's why we created Thai Coach Kids. I think it'd be a long journey, but back to Confucius, okay? But I think we, we can make some really good first steps. So that's why the project was created, to support the development of a specialist coaching workforce uh, for children and young people across the European Union. We've got some great partners there that really brought a lot of expertise um, and desire to do this. And let's see what, what we've done. Okay, main thing is that it's a not-for-profit project that is for everybody. And I, I will emphasize this again, it's free. It's open source, anyone can use it. Anyone can borrow from it. If you want to incorporate any into your own resources, it's there for you, okay? Uh, I'm not going to bore you with this. In fact, look, if you, if you read that, this will happen to you. Okay, um, but just to let you know that behind the behind the the e-learning and and all the materials, there's a massive literature review that we did to make sure that we were on point, that we weren't just going, yeah, we think that's good coaching. No, everything is informed by by the latest evidence that we could uh, we could access. Okay, because you're gonna go to sleep if you do if you read the full lit review, which is about 120 pages. We created a 15-page summary that hopefully will encourage you to, to read it. But if that's still not uh, short enough, okay, then we distilled that lead review into what we call the, uh, the iCoach Kids Pledge. The 10 golden rules for coaching children. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna play you a little clip from the from the MOOCs to introduce the pledge. It's just one minute, okay? Hi again. We now have a very good idea of the role of the children's coach and the key elements we need to consider when developing sport programs for children. Over the course of the three MOOCs, we will go into a lot more detail in all these areas. But right now, we want to share with you a little summary that we are sure will help you stay on track. We have called it the iCoach Kids Pledge, and we would like coaches and sport clubs all over the world to commit to it. The pledge contains 10 golden rules that will guarantee that a sport is a positive experience. I'm going to take you through all 10 points very quickly. And then Chris is going to help me explain what each of these golden rules means in the real world. So here go the ten rules. Cliffhanger. <laughs> okay? Right, so it's over to you, right? Um, okay. You've got three minutes to, with the, peop with, with the two guys next to you, in groups of three if you can, Write down really quickly. You've got three minutes, okay? What you think the 10 rules could be. Okay, are you ready for this? Time starts now. <laughs> Yeah. 
You're right. Yeah, good. Thank you for coming. That's quite, quite all right. Um, how do I get on the Wi-Fi? Just got a couple of things to do on my. Uh, so you register and he sends you an email, but unfortunately within connected. the building yeah. there's no no, no signal. No so you probably you have to go outside. outside to get the email. It's, it's a pain in the backside. That's fine. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> Seconds. Okay, so this is what we're going to do next. We're going to have a competition, like a quiz, like pop quiz style, okay? I'm going to give you the 10 rules, and if you got it, okay, it doesn't have to be in the same words, obviously, but if you think that you got it, you got to go, yeah, okay? Can you do that? Yeah, are you sure? Yeah! Good. Well, let's go. Here we go. I'm going to take you to all 10 points very and then Chris is going to help me explain what each of these golden rules means in the real world. So here go the 10 rules. One, be child centered. Yay! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Two, be holistic. Yay! Be inclusive. Wow, yeah, anybody still on track for the bingo, yeah? yeah. Four, yeah. yeah. Five, prioritize the local sport above learning sport. Yeah. yeah. We can discuss that one later. Six, focus on foundational skills. Yeah. Fundamental movement skills, okay. Seven, engage parents positively. Yay! Ouch, that's a difficult one, eh? Eight, plan progressive programs. Yay! Nine, use different methods to enhance learning. Yay! That went quiet. <laughs> and ten, use competition in a developmental way. Okay, let me... No, no, it's okay. It's all, it's all planned. Hopefully. Okay. All right. So, what happened in that? That's the first time I've done this. Okay. What happened there? 
when we were doing, when we were going down one by one, what happened? It got quieter and quieter, right? Which, honestly, I, w I didn't mean to, right? But it's interesting. Why do you think that was? You got tired? Okay. <laughs> Damn, that's not what I was expecting. Was that all? Was it tiredness or? Were are we starting to see things that perhaps we haven't thought about too much in the past? I don't know. We will never know, okay? But that might be another explanation. Um, so, I'm going to get you working a little bit again. Ooh. Okay. We've got the 10 golden rules there. Again, and we'll just go for a couple of minutes with the person, with the same guys you were working before. When you look at those 10 rules, which ones are the hardest to live with in your current environment and why? Just have that quick discussion, okay? Another two minutes, off you go. Go, go, go. Say that again, five and five. So let me put this back on, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. More about the how, yeah. That's a really good point. And that's why they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> Except they don't. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's take a couple of views from from the floor. Someone that, that wants to share what the discussion was about with your in your group. What was difficult to live with, or might be harder to implement? Yep. I can't catch. <laughs> yeah, um, I work in a performance environment. So I work with the, I'm the head of youth of the Rugby League Club and we work with athletes from 15 up to 19. In the 19s to 16s, that's one playing group. So our 16, our first year students, second year students and third year students play as one age group. So the rule 10 is the hardest for me to get the administrators and finances of the club and the performance of the coaches of the club to actually see competition as a development process it is a real hard sell and because we've got three age groups it's very cyclic so if we have a young academy results tend to fall if we have a senior academy so we have more third and second years we have a strong representation so this year um, we have the highest number of third year players which is seven in a group of 27 yeah. and it's the best season we will have had competition wise development wise I think we, we might suffer a little bit because not as many first years have had experience so next year I'm already conditioning the club to expect a little bit less yeah and that's important okay because again we we, you know, if there's a there's a full 10 minute video on the uh, on the YouTube channel explaining the uh, the pledge. Um, thanks a lot for that. And 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 we say that the first sentence is, "Don't get me wrong, we don't think competition is the devil. Competition can be great at any age, but we just have to format it in the right way." Okay, and that's what you're planning to do. You know, preparing the ground for that for that to happen, because that you know, should be developmental at any age. And the winning or losing might matter more or less depending on, on the age and stage. Okay, and you can still manage that in different ways. One, one more. Any other route? There you go. 
obviously it's one we all aspire for, but I think the being inclusive one can be a huge challenge depending on the technical, the technical level of your sport, the number of participants, and the number of coaches and assistant coaches that you have access to. And then obviously, unfortunately, sometimes you only have the kids maybe once a week or possibly twice a week if you're lucky. So there can be a lot of mitigating factors in relation to the challenges, why you also want to be inclusive around it. Okay, and that, that's, I mean, that's, I, I particularly feel, for me, it's one of the hardest, really. Uh, and it's nothing to do being inclusive, it's not just about disability. Yeah. It's about different levels of ability within a group, it's about different, you know, it's about gender, it's about a number of things, really. Um, and that's hard for a coach. Um, but it's, it's, it is a really, really important challenge that we need to rise up to. And it might take a little bit of planning or, or extra effort, but it is important that we rise. So, so some two examples that I, I really would love you to, over coffee, continue that discussion about what's difficult about that or what you're already doing really well about that. Okay. Now, just briefly, because you were all, most of you were here this morning for the um, for the uh, for the session on the MOOC um, to help people. Um, put the, the pledge into action. We've got um, some e-learning that you can access, you will be able to access through the through our website. We've also asked, um, who's got the um, the registration detail sheet for the uh, people that want to become testers for the... Uh, is it up here? Okay. So there's a, a, a couple of sheets going round. If you want to become a tester for the MOOC for the next few weeks because you really want to get into the detail, that'd be great. Please fill that in. Uh, like I say, three MOOCs, we've just done one, and we've got two more to go. That's what it looks like, really, but we went through it this morning. Um, if you want, like I say, if you want to become a tester, just leave us your email, and we will send it to you. That's one cool thing for me, okay? Because some people might not have the time to go uh, and do the MOOC. We created the uh, YouTube channel, which I showed you this morning, but the reason why this is cool for me is because this is making me cool in front of my 12-year-old. Because he goes round telling people that his dad is a YouTuber. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. But anyway, we managed to actually, only yesterday, uh, in, in, in a day and a half, we, we now have, um, I think it's 120 subscribers, uh, which is not bad, really, considering where we were a day and a half ago. Okay? And we want you to, again, be the apostles and, and, and spread the word there. Because the thing is, all the, all the videos that are in the MOOCs can be accessed directly here if someone hasn't got the time to, to do the MOOC, okay? So all the knowledge is there, all the ideas are there. Um, and we've got the website as well, which will, will also contain uh, uh, all of this. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.